guys, welcome back to my channel. So after going through two babies now, sleep is definitely something that I have missed out on my fair share of. So I thought I'd do some tips that I've used with both Isabella and Thea, which I found really, really helpful and beneficial to start implementing a good bedtime routine. And I hope you enjoy today's video and find it really useful. Okay, so look at this like these are things that I've done with Isabella and continue to do with Thea. Um, Isabella stepped re really well from really early on. She actually started sleeping through the night completely from 10 weeks. And Thea, as I've noticed, I don't know if it's because of the tips that I'm doing or if she's just generally a good sleeper, but she is kind of following in that step. She's not yet sleeping through the night, but she is, um, she only wakes up once now. And it's, I, I think some of the things that I've done have really helped that along. These are probably normal things that you hear anyway, but I thought I would just share them with you. And again, I'm not saying that if you follow them that your baby will sleep through the night, but they're just things that I found really, really helpful. Okay, so the first tip that I have is to establish a like bed time. Um, obviously, this has become easier since I've stopped breastfeeding and I'm now bottle feeding. Obviously, it's easier to know exactly what your baby is taking in. Um, and what I try and do is from between the hours of nine and 10, that will be when I give her her last bottle before bed obviously being a newborn she does feed through the night but that's when I get myself ready for bed and I'm in bed and that is my last bottle before I try and go off to sleep myself. If it's coming up to that time and I feel like she's getting hungry I do try and hold it out a little bit because I feel like she'll feed better and hopefully her being awake that little bit longer beforehand will really help her go into a longer sleep. Now she does go to sleep, as I said, sometimes between nine and 10. She's not actually waking up sometimes between like one and three in the morning. So it's quite a long period of time before she does actually wake up. Um, and that is something that has really, really helped uh, me just feel a bit more refreshed in the morning, <laughs> getting that bit of our sleep. And then after that time, she doesn't actually wake up again until like sometimes like five and six really. So again, that's two big bursts of sleep that she's doing, um, which is really, really helpful. Okay, so my second tip is to keep your daytime naps and your nighttime naps separate, if that makes sense. Okay, so as we're going up to bed, I will sort of be quite quiet. Um, I'll keep all the lights low. So I'll just draw the curtains. I don't have the main light on. Um, and I just sort of do things quite quietly. In the middle of the night, when I'm feeding and changing her, I don't put any of the main lights on. I just use the light from my phone. Um, and if I want to dim that, I literally just put the formula pot, like the little powder pot on top of it to try and dim the light a little bit so it's not that bright that way I think it kind of keeps them in that sleepy mode daytime wise I don't black out anything I keep it light I keep all the noise on I vacuum around her I just keep it quite busy I think by keeping the daytime light and the nighttime dark um helps her to establish that I know a lot of people daytime they'll go around and block out all the light from around the curtains and they'll keep everything really quiet and try and make it seem like nighttime but to me that confuses their body clock because they don't know exactly when nighttime is. I want to make sure that she knows the daytime is the daytime and her, na and her daytime naps don't, ha everyone doesn't have to stop doing what they're doing just so that she can sleep. I want her to be able to sleep um, throughout whatever during the day and then nighttime is when she has her big sleeps. Again, that's something that I did with Isabella and it worked really well. As I said, Thea seems to be following in that. So to me, it seems like it is working. Um, but again, let me know your thoughts on that. Do you, are you someone that blocks out all the light? Do you Did you find that helpful? Did you find that your baby just wouldn't sleep, whatever? Just let me know. I'm interested in to find out anyway. Okay, so my third tip kind of ties in with the last one, but I try not to talk to her at all through the night time. People might think I'm neglecting my baby, but I'm really not. It's just, I feel like if I interact with her, she kind of, I can see her like start to wake up and like gurgle and start about me. And while that is so cute because she is now starting to smile and coo and things, it is so adorable. I don't want to like wake her up over the night time. I don't want to stimulate her to make her be too awake. <laughs> so at night time, I try and keep, as I said earlier, keep everything dark, keep everything quiet. I don't talk to her. Um, I'd literally just feed her, burp her and, you know, try and soothe her into going back to sleep. Okay, so my fourth tip is to set up a nighttime station. I will set out everything on my bedside. I'll have all her bottles, like I'll have the formula ready. I'll have the nappies, the wipes, the cream out ready so that during the middle of the night I don't have to get up. I don't have to rummaging around anywhere for anything. It's literally right next to me. So 
one because I'm tired and I don't want to be stumbling around at night but two I don't want to make too much of a disturbance for her at night time it's something I did kind of do with Isabella but I didn't really have that much of a knack for it this time I feel like I've got it down like and that is something that has been really really helpful okay so tip number five at the moment in the UK we have gone through like a bit of a heat wave um, especially like the week she was born it was so so hot um, and obviously a lot of people know newborns like to be held and people always recommend like swaddling them um, so that they don't sort of spread out when you let go of them because that's something that kind of wake, wakes her up um, but with it being so hot at the moment that's something we haven't been able to do Isabella we had in February so it was really cold at that point so what I'll do is I'll sort of as I put her down I'll keep one hand under her head and one hand on her bum and I'll kind of just hold her there so she feels nice and like compact and firm if that makes sense um, and then as I see her sort of slowly start to relax I'll slowly start to let go of her just that way so it's not just a big jolt when she comes when she lays down it is kind of a gradual process as if she was being swaddled without all the blankets because it's just far too hot as I said I know that is kind of maybe climate specific or like season specific especially for us in the UK at the moment but I know a lot of people might have that problem so I thought that I'd just share that with you today okay so there you have it they are my tips um I hope you found them useful I know they're probably things that people have mentioned before or are quite obvious but I thought I would share them anyway. All you new mummies out there are trying to get as much sleep as possible. I, as I said before in another video I just forgot how much it takes out of you having a baby especially having a toddler and a newborn. It's just so draining it just never ever stops. <laughs> Please add that in the comments below I'd be really interested to hear what you do to help your baby sleep. I'm now on Instagram so please do follow me on there as well as my normal things Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe and give a big thumbs up if you did enjoy today's video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.